got two great stories about playing with a click that were definitely life changers for me. <laughs> um, you know, a lot of people think that playing with a click, playing with a metronome makes you stiff. And I've worked with it so much to know that, no, I can move around. I can make the time a little more elastic. Or I can make it very regimented. But the truth is that playing with a metronome just means you have really good time. You want a great internal sense of meter. If you have an 80-piece orchestra of top-class, world-class musicians, every one of those musicians has a great sense of time. Because you have 80 people playing together, and any one person is out of time, it can be a mess. So I remember doing a record in the 90s for a friend of mine, Dave Cause, he's a sax player. And he had been doing these smooth jazz R&B records that all had a bunch of loops and all, were always played with clicks and loops, and they wanted to do an acoustic record. And they wanted to abandon the use of clicks, and metronomes, and anything. And they were pretty adamant about it. And the producer, Tom Pannunzio, said, okay, Mark, you know, no clicks, we want to just play, we're going to cut everything live. Then he says, but then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the takes and I'm going to cut verses and choruses in from different takes. And immediately in my head I thought, he wants to do this without, without a click, but he wants to cut all these different takes in. The tempos are going to move because that's what tempos do. So I thought, well, that's when I made an executive decision. So when we rehearsed all this stuff, I had the big studio headphones on and I had the little headphones on underneath and a little metronome. And I told him I was just using the metronome to as a tempo basis to start the songs. But then I ended up playing the songs with a click. They felt great, because I knew they would feel great. And then a week later, after we're done, and Tom Pannunzio's cutting all the takes together, he calls me, he goes, Mark, I gotta tell you, man, your time is perfect. You made it so easy for me. I've been able to cut all these takes together, and there's been no problems at all. You're so great. And he hired me for four more records. Cha-ching! So, the click is your friend. Another experience. Uh, I got the gig with Stevie Nicks who sings for Fleetwood Mac, and she's very organic, and she's very old school, she's a wonderful lady, and Waddy Wachtel, very famous guitar player, is the musical director, and Waddy kind of talks like this, he's a mock, so you know, she, Stevie doesn't like to use clicks or anything, you know, make sure that the tempos move and that they're not rigid, she doesn't like clicks and everything. I said, okay. So we rehearsed for five weeks, and I used to click on every song, because I wanted to, even if I wasn't gonna use the click live, because I respect what the, their desires, I wanted to lock in the tempo memory, lock in the muscle memory so everybody was just comfortable. Especially because when you're rehearsing and you get on stage and you have your adrenaline and your perception changes and how many times have we seen bands, you go see a band and they're playing something too live and it loses the groove because there's only a certain point where things really still groove. How much above a certain tempo you can get and it's still going to feel good for a specific song. So for all five weeks, we played every song with a click, every rehearsal. So it comes to gig time, we play the first couple of shows. After the first show, I said, so how'd you like it, Wadi? Well, you know, it was great, but this song was too fast, this song was too slow, this was too fast. I said, okay. I didn't say anything about the click because it's not about me, it's not about my ego. I just want to make it easy for them. So we play the next show, same thing. A one song might be too fast, this one might be too slow. I said, okay, great. I don't care. Third song, third show, the same thing. I said, Wadi, I gotta tell you, I was referencing every song with a click to make sure the tempos were right. He says, oh, really? All right, well, it must have been me then, never mind. And he never bothered me again. <laughs> and everybody was happy. This, the, it was like, you know, Lenny Castro's on the tour. It was just, it was just a brilliant tour. So the tempos and the click, everything was really, really locked in. So I do believe that it's okay to play with click tracks, and it's definitely okay to, to mad bad tempos. It's also okay to speed up and slow down. Just know that you're doing it. Because sometimes I will kick the band, and sometimes I'm, I have a very unique setup when I play live. And a lot of people don't know about this, but I, I use the TD20, the Roland unit, as a metronome. I have all of my, my, my songs programmed in, and what I do is I start and stop the tempos, the click track, with my left heel. So to the left of my hi-hat, I can be playing and stopping and starting while I'm playing, and I can advance it with my right foot. So I'm always, sometimes I'll turn the click off, because it's okay to play without a click, but I might turn it back on to check the tempo reference. And sometimes the band just wants to go. So I might turn the click off because the band wants to go. Sometimes the band hasn't had enough sleep, 
and they're pulling back. So I'll turn the click off so we can pull back because I don't want to be rigid about it. But this allows me to start and stop the click and have different tempos set up that I can advance with my right foot and I never even stop the groove. So that's one little secret that I've been doing in my 23 years of touring that I guess has worked. <laughs> Yeah, the click. The click. By my side. By my side. And of course, when I, you know, playing with Cher, playing with Pink, um, there are a lot of loops and a lot of samples and such. So we're playing most of those songs with clicks anyway. With, you know, with the Pro, there's a Pro Tools rig off to the side and then they're sending me the clicks. But the songs that don't have the, the, the clicks and the metronomes, I have on my own for, again, for, for tempo reference. But not every song's going to work with the clicks. Yeah. In all these experiences you had, are there like good moments you remember, or bad moments, or a special situation where you felt good or, or bad, something on stage or off the stage that... Memorable you know, good and bad moments. Um, lots of them. Just, just about yeah. all of them are good. Right. <laughs> uh, I really, I'm the guy that really tries to enjoy every moment, you know. I had cancer and I've had a few issues in my life that have caused me to realize that every moment is precious and life is just a series of nows and the past doesn't exist and the way you live your life now determines your future. So I feel like, man, i got to embrace this moment and this moment and this moment. So, you know, occasionally I might complain or whine, but it's a very rare occurrence and I'm usually the guy that's kind of making sure doing my best to endorse that everybody else is happy around me because if people around me are happy then it's very easy for me to be happy. So the experiences are generally great. Sometimes you're traveling, you know, more of the experiences around the traveling and being tired. Even on this tour I did a clinic in Kiev and got done with the clinic, had dinner, went back to the hotel. By the time I got to sleep, I got about three and a half hours sleep, woke up, got woke up at 4.30 or 5 in the morning, got on a plane, and then flew to the Czech Republic to do a clinic the next day. So to me, the most challenging thing sometimes is getting sleep. Other times you have all the time in the world when the, when the tour is on a groove, you can sleep, you can sleep all day if you, if you, if you want. But I like to always get things done and enjoy myself so, and, and try to do some work and see the sights. Um, but the playing experiences have all been incredibly high. I mean, playing, you know, highlights, I played in front of 220,000 people at the Glastonbury Festival with Simple Minds, and I look on the side of the stage and I notice Peter Gabriel standing on the side of the stage watching the show. I thought, this is a moment I'm just going to remember because I'm looking out at the audience, the audience is on grass, and it's going like this, and I can't even see the end of the audience. It's like, it's like a sea of people, and that was magnificent. And Page and Plant played before us. I used to joke and say, yeah, Led Zeppelin opened up for us, you know. <laughs> that was a very memorable time. And um, shooting the DVDs I did with Pink were really memorable. Uh, with Pink, we played 57 sold out arena shows in Australia. She broke every sales and attendance record. You know, so we did 17 shows in Melbourne and we shot a live DVD in Sydney. And, you just you, you feel like you're on a way, like this on the height of someone's career. You're just at the top, and it's just really really brilliant, and I love it. And you know the first time I ever played the uh, the Tonight Show in 1988 with Brenda Russell, and I realized this is going out, and if I screw up, they're not going to stop rolling. This is it's not exactly live, but it will be live in three hours. And I and I remember sitting behind the drums and going, Wow. This is like, this is a big deal. You know, 10 million people are going to watch this tonight. And uh, they're not going to stop. If I, they'll, they might stop if she screws up. Like, I ended up doing a lot of these shows, and one of them I did with Richard Marks. And we started playing, and his microphone wasn't working, so we had to stop and restart, because that's why it isn't actually live. But I've done live shows then, too. The Grammys, American Music Awards, where you have a seven-second delay. That's all you got. If something messes up, they have seven seconds to fix it. So you're going to play something that millions of people are going to see live, and then you got to be on your game. That's exciting. That's when the adrenaline's really rushing, and you go, wow, this is fantastic. Especially when you're really playing live. Yeah. Uh, an example, when I did the Grammys with Tina Turner, um, we had 
pre-recorded the songs we were playing along with our own tracks. So she was singing live, and then she was, we were performing with Beyonce. They were both singing the leads live, but we were playing our own tracks. So I could even like flip sticks and do whatever, and it didn't really matter because I was playing along with my own track. But played the American Music Awards with Pink, and we were playing live with an orchestra on TV, and you're going, wow, that's, that's heavy duty. That's an amazing amount of fun. So I gotta say my experiences have been generally just profoundly wonderful, and the negative experiences I don't even want to talk about. Ha, ha, ha.